Hey guys, this is Joe Duckemeyer with Screen Rant. I am with the costume designer for Loki, Christine Wada. How are you? I am very good, thank you. Season two is phenomenal. You guys jump around from different genres and different eras. What was one of your favorite eras to explore in season two? 1970s. So fun. So fun is such a great way to transition us out of the TVA and then jump into that glamour world. Go from, you know, uniform to glamour was really fun. And I think it's a fun journey for characters like B-15 and to see her out of the armor and the, the uniform. It's great. We do end up in a uh, McDonald's there. How much research oh. did you do with those old school McDonald's outfits? A lot. They're spot on. They are, they are spot, spot on. on. They, uh, it comes from a catalog. Uh, well, not a catalog. It actually comes from the handbook. So we really tried to stay as true and honest to that as possible. Um, yeah. Yeah. One of the uh, other ones that really jumped out to me was the World's Fair. Everything looks so incredibly detailed. Even the way it was shot was beautiful. Talk to me about designing the costumes for that sequence, because there's a lot of folks wearing costumes from that era. Yeah. I mean, that was, first of all, it was just interesting to try to make it feel like America in that era because a lot of of course we filmed in London so a lot of the costumes uh, are from Europe and um, it's just American it to add some of that like little western vibe to it and a little less fitted because uh, in in Europe everybody was really more you know everything the collar was tight and the, the everything was a little more trim and when you Look at old American research. It's like there's just a little more cowboy to it. Right. A little, little bit more cowboy to it. So it's fun to do that and just to, and designing it to, to sort of, in a weird way, almost be a little bit like the TVA because it's still a uniform. When Absolutely. you go back to the 1890s, you realize that like it's still it's still kind of a uniform. Like there just wasn't as much choice, which I think is interesting when this season's somewhat about choice. Sure. And we're, we're going to this era where, there really wasn't a lot of choice. So it was fun to to play with that a little bit. So I really restricted the palette as much as I could. Um, and to, I tried to think about how we see those past era, mm. pa past actual centuries and we see them sort of in black and white or as colorized photography. And I thought um, it would be nice to s sort of feed that into that episode. Now, Christine, Loki has evolved as a character from season one to season two. I don't even think Thor would recognize this version of Loki <laughs> at this point. But talk to me about what went into Loki's design this season, breaking away or evolving from last season. It's He still, I think he needed to be tied to the TVA and all his relationships in the TVA. So it's it's basically um, kind of assembling what would Loki do if he still wanted to have um, an attachment visually to the TVA, but he could, but Loki, the God could create his own uniform, TVA uniform. So he still has the pants from season one. Um, but I think the jacket is definitely something that Loki would, uh, sure. would conjure up. How much input does Tom Hiddleston have in the, in the look of Loki? Quite a bit. I mean, he's definitely, um, but input that is maybe not even verbal because I just think that there is a physicality to Tom that if you're if you're paying attention, it dictates what costume how you're going to design those costumes because he his presence just brings a lot to the table and the way he uh, performs brings a lot to the table. So you really, as a designer, like I said, I think if you're doing your homework, you can really take from uh, a much more um, nuanced directive. Now, <clears throat> I want to talk about Sylvie's look for a second because mm -hmm. it's uh, it's blending. She's in a different point, obviously, in season two, but it's blending her Asgardian armor along with being more casual. Mm -hmm. What went into developing that for her? Oh, there's so many different elements because it, she, you wanted her to feel like she picked up something from the 80s because she's really just trying to live a more, uh, a real life, right? And I don't, and I felt like her palette had to stay somewhat subdued because I just think she's just trying to blend in, but it also had to give her swagger. And just from a really like uh, technical level of like six episodes, sure. it was also how do we, <clears throat> how do we keep Sylvie looking, um, how do we not make it campy or goofy for her to arrive in the 1890s 
in this sure. 80s getup. It's just because I think the season is such an uh, an internal exploration of these characters that you want the costumes to be more vulnerable and you don't want the you don't want them to just stand out when they're going into these different environments in a way that's at all campy or um jolting now in quantumania we got introduced to victor timely and we get his story expanded here in loki season two can you talk to me about designing uh victor timely's look and to have that stand out from other variations of kang the conqueror um well it was really inspired by Frederick Douglass. I mean, that just, I, I think it's on the page. I think we're in the 1890s World Fair. And I think if we stay true to what Loki, I think, is very successful at and really f- and what makes it so fun to design is it always takes elements from real life. I mean, even the TVA being grounded in the, in the 60s and having some of the analog of the 60s, I think that, I think it makes uh, I don't. Know, I just think it makes the show special and, and exciting, and I think that that's with uh, Victor Timely's character. Just to have a a real person be sort of our base role model, and um, just allowed us to design something that, you know, I mean, he can only. He's just. Yeah, it's yeah. I mean, it, Jonathan Major, even his, his subtleties of that character, are phenomenal. Even the small things he small does, small things, and just the rise of the pant, where the pant is, and just the posture, and um, you know, even his handkerchief, I I embroidered with his initials, and he's, I actually made him real period underwear, so he could like oh, wow. really feel like he was getting into the, the whole time period, so. Ki Hu Kwan might be my uh, uh, favorite new MCU character. Obi uh, is phenomenal. Uh, what went into des- 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 designing his look and staying true to still uh, with the TVA kind of aesthetic? Um, it well, it started in like I'd say production design is has always been. Um, just so collaborative and something to cue off of. And I remember Kazra talking about maybe keeping um, his we were going to see these new areas of the TVA and so, and having OB feel a little bit more and his world feeling a little bit more like it's from the forties sure. or early fifties. Right. And um, so that jumpsuit is, I pulled uh, period jumpsuits from that era. There's even that buckle, the high right. buckle in the back that is just very much a nod to those, those older periods. And just, just doing all that like work wear herringbone from that period. It was just, just trying to keep him a little more back to it. And of course, then the, and there's also, uh, there were so many different iterations of that costume that really? his dad did. And so it really became this like, well, what, what are we trying to say that fits into this entire cohesive vision? And so uh, staying a little more period, a little more mechanical which, felt right. Which character went through the most evolution from season one to season two <clears throat> and was the most challenging for you? Hmm. Wow. I would say that that has to kind of, really does have to be Sylvie, even though right, Sylvie right. is oddly still wearing her uh, armor from season one. I I just think it, it it had to feel more vulnerable and more real and just taking the whole thing down a little bit. So I think finding that sweet spot was hard. And um, But then again, working with the acting of Sophia is not hard. So <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> now, out of... Um, out of what we've seen in the first four episodes, I know we have two. I haven't seen the, the, the final two episodes of this, but uh, can you tease anything that we would see visually that's uh, coming up without giving a spoiler away? Oh, you're like it's hard to tiptoe around that. I feel like, right? I don't think that I can. I don't know <laughs> how to. I would never want to spoil it because I think sure. that I think that it's so impactful, like what happens through this season. That I would. I don't think I could say anything. You know, I do have a question for you actually about the uh, spacesuit. Oh yeah. Um, is that a is that a, a physical spacesuit or was that all like a, a CG like type of? <sighs> Love you. Uh, no, it's all practical, and oh, I have wow. to say that's another thing that I think is really fun and special about um, Loki in particular is that we try very hard to do as much in camera as possible. And um, Justin and Aaron were really great about that and so um no that's 
almost all practicals. We made a destructive version and we made a, like, we made so many different versions of it. So it's uh, all practical, which what? wasn't easy, but it's modular. So it gave the actors some breathing. Yeah, that was room, a debate but, that I had whether or not that was real or not. It, it looks so good. Oh, I'm so excited. That's great. That's so cool. That's great. Well, look, thank you so much for your time. This is amazing. Uh, What, out of these costumes, Uh which one is your favorite? I know it's like picking your favorite child. I mean, right now, I'm really, well, I love the collar of Tom's. Come on. This is mean. This is mean. I love his collar. I love Sylvie's coat, and I really love Renslayer. So I'm sorry. I can't keep it to one. I broke the rules. (laughs) All good. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. you. Amazing. Thank you.